This example problem is a continuation of a previous example problem. Uh, so I'm going to be a little briefer in, in some of the steps. Um, but uh, we're looking at a, a rectangular pre-stressed post-tensioned member uh, with a given area of steel, given area of uh, pre-stressing, um, given length, given area of concrete, and a 7 KSI concrete strength. Um, in the previous example, we looked at the uh, response of this section um, under a 225 kip tensile load and a um, 1000 kip compression load. Uh, and we're going to, in this example, um, determine the strain and stresses in the section under a 1000 kip compression load, so a, a load of axial load of negative 1000 kips. Um, only this time we're going to also uh, consider the given time effects. So we're going to assume that this 1000 kip uh, axial load is sustained um, on the column. So we have our creep coefficient, which is given, our shrinkage strain, which is given, and our relaxation um, in the pre-stressing strand, which is given. Um, and again, we could calculate the uh, creep coefficient and the shrinkage strain and the strand relaxation um, using a number of different uh, procedures that are available um, in the literature and also available in um, different specifications. Um, so I'm giving us these to keep our example a little briefer. Um, so the first step would be to find the initial strains that occur in during the tensioning procedure um, to ultimately find our locked in strain in the post tensioning. Um, this is the same procedure as in the previous example. Uh, so I'll be briefer in explaining it. Um, but again, we can start with uh, linear approximations. Um, so we're assuming that our uh, concrete, our steel and our pre-stressing are all linear elastic. Um, so we can find the modulus of elasticity in our concrete uh, to be 4,770. The um, initial strain in the pre-stressing caused by uh, the post-tensioning stress uh, to be our stress in the pre-stressing 175 divided by the stiffness in our pre-stressing 28,500, which will give us an initial strain in the pre-stressing strands of 6.14 times 10 to the negative third. And then we can find the initial force in the pre-stressing strands uh, by taking the stress times the area, uh, which will give us our force of 214.2 kips. Similar to the previous example, we can find the um, locked in strain, uh, or I guess the initial strain in our column. Uh, and from there, the uh, locked in strain uh, starting from equilibrium. Um, so our equilibrium expression shown here at the top has our concrete, our steel, and our pre-stressing components equal to our externally applied axial load. Um, we have no externally applied axial load initially, um, so we have all of our components equal to zero. Um, we're using linear elastic material properties, so we can relate our stress um, to our strain with the modulus, uh, which we do for our, our three different components, or our two components. The stress in the pre-stressing is given initially as uh, 175 KSI. Um, so we don't need to uh, relate that to strain. Um, so plugging in our known values, we have our initial uh, strain in the, con in the column. Uh, and we can calculate that as uh, negative 0 0.131 times 10 to the negative third. So using that then, we can calculate the uh, locked in strain differential between the pre-stressing and the concrete uh, as shown there. So after we have this locked in strain, um, we can then move on uh, to uh, starting our process for finding the stresses and strains under that 1000 kip uh, sustained axial uh, load in compression. Um, so first we're gonna see how we account for our uh, long-term effects. And we're going to account for these um, using the effective concrete modulus and the effective pre-stressing modulus. The, um, so our effective concrete modulus is just going to be our modulus of our concrete divided by one plus our creep coefficient. And uh, solving for this, we can uh, find that our effective modulus is 1,290 KSI. Um, so we'll use this 
effective modulus in our stress strain relationships wherever we used our modulus before. Um, so one place that we used our modulus before was finding the strain at ultimate strength. So we can also find the effective strain at ultimate strength, uh, which will be two times our seven KSI divided by our effective modulus, 1290. Uh, which will give us a strain at ultimate of 10.8 times 10 to the negative third. And we're going to use that value in our uh, stress strain relationship. The effective pre stressing modulus is just 1 minus our percent relaxation times the uh, modulus of elasticity for our pre stressing. Um, so for us, we had a 5%. Uh, relaxation, so we take point or 1 minus 0 0.05, which will give us uh, 0.95, times the modulus in our pre-stressing, uh, which will give us our effective modulus of 27,075 KSI. Um, so that's our effective modulus for our concrete and our effective modulus for our steel. Um, when accounting for shrinkage, um, our, the shrinkage component is going to uh, change how the strain in the column relates to the strain causing stress in the concrete. Um, so you can see the strain causing stress in the concrete is going to be equal to the strain in the column minus the shrinkage strain, um, where our shrinkage strain is, is given. Um, so we're going to use this relationship uh, as, as we move forward in this example. So now we're going to find our strains and our stresses under this negative 1,000 kip sustained load. So 1,000 kips uh, sustained in axial compression. Um, we're going to start again from equilibrium um, here and, and calculate things by hand. And then uh, we'll again use a, an Excel sheet to, uh, uh, to calculate it using a uh, parabolic stress strain relationship for our concrete. Um, but to start with our, our by hand with uh, linear elastic assumptions, um, we can set our concrete plus steel plus pre-stressing components equal to our applied axial load. So our applied axial load is negative 1,000 kips, um, which is in, in compression for us. Uh, everywhere that we had a, a modulus of elasticity before, we'll use our effective modulus. So we have our effective modulus of our concrete and our effective modulus of our steel. Um, again, the uh, stress in our pre-stressing is equal to the effective modulus in the pre-stressing times the strain in the column plus that locked in strain differential. Um, nothing changes with our steel component compared to our, our short-term analysis. Um, so the stress in the steel is equal to the stiffness of the steel times the um, strain in the column. Uh, but with our concrete component, now the stress in the concrete is equal to our effective modulus times the strain in the column minus this uh, shrinkage strain that happens in the concrete. So um, plugging in all these values, we can uh, we'll bring us to this next line. Um, you can see that our only unknown is our epsilon c. So solving for epsilon c, we can find the uh, strain in our column is equal to negative 2.45 times 10 to the negative third. Um, so that's the strain in the column due to this 1000 kip axial load. Um, so next we can calculate all of our stress components just by um, taking our uh, modulus times the strain causing stress in the concrete. So that's the column stress minus our shrinkage, or sorry, column strain minus the shrinkage strain. Uh, so we'll get a, a stress in the con concrete of negative 2.64. Um, then in the steel, we take our modulus times the strain in the steel, and we get a stress of negative 71.1. And we can do the same thing that we did before with our pre-stressing and get a stress in the pre-stressing of 103.4 KSI. Um, so what we can see is that one of our assumptions doesn't check. Our steel is, uh, our, the stress in the steel is greater than our yield stress of 60 KSI. Um, 
so we know that the the steel has yielded so we need to go back to equilibrium now with a new assumption um, assuming now that the stress in our steel is equal to the yield stress in compression so we'll have a, a negative sign there um, so going back to our equilibrium expression we're plugging in um, negative 60 ksi um, into our uh, equilibrium expression then solving for epsilon c again will give us a strain of negative 2.55 times 10 to the negative third um, so this is our our new strain um, again assuming that uh, we have that our steel's yielded but we'll need to, to check that assumption again so using this um, strain that we found we can again calculate our stresses and our forces um, in our three different components, our, our concrete, steel, and pre-stressing. Um, so we can see that our concrete stress uh, will increase a little bit to 2.77. Our steel stress is yielded, so we're at uh, negative 60 KSI. And the uh, stress in our pre-stressing uh, now is at um, 100.7 KSI. Uh, so taking our stresses then times our area components will give us our three forces um, and then we can sum these forces to check our equilibrium um, equation so our concrete force plus our steel force plus our pre-stressing force um, should be about equal to uh, 1000 kips and might be a little off because of uh, some rounding errors but uh, here we uh, you know, our, our value is about a thousand negative a thousand kips so our, our equilibrium checks um, all of our assumptions check um, so this is our strain under um, negative 1000 kips uh, of sustained axial load similar to before we can set up a spreadsheet uh, to use a parabolic stress strain relationship for our concrete um, so you can see here some of the uh, inputs that I have in my spreadsheet uh, so the inputs again are in tan we have our calculated initial values um, and then we also I'm including the uh, long-term effects in this spreadsheet so uh, where I input the creep coefficient and I input our um, shrinkage strain and I also input the relaxation percentage. So using these inputs, um, we can again calculate the uh, strain, stress, and force components in our concrete, our steel, and our pre-stressing, um, except now we need to include the uh, um, impact of creep, uh, shrinkage, and relaxation of our pre-stressing. Um, so you can see the shrinkage impacts how the um, strain driving the stress in the concrete relates to our overall strain in our column um, so the epsilon cf is just going to be equal to the strain in the column minus our shrinkage strain uh, where our shrinkage strain is negative our uh, stress strain relationship for our concrete now um, we use this uh, epsilon um, prime C effective so the uh, effective strain at ultimate strength um, and we use our uh, EC effective when we're calculating that value nothing changes with our steel so our steel strain is still equal to the column strain um, our stress is still equal to the strain um, in the steel times the modulus and our force is still um, stress times the area uh, in the pre-stressing everything is the same except now we use our effective modulus to relate the strain in the pre-stressing to the stress in the pre-stressing um, so we'll use this uh, epsilon or this EP effective um, in place of um, EP uh, we also should modify the point when our steel goes uh, in a, goes in elastic um, so we'll modify that as well with our EP effective so using this uh, spreadsheet and uh, goal seek we can find the strain in the column required to uh, 
or resulting from a, a negative 1000 kip axial load. Um, and then we can compare the value that we got from our spreadsheet um, using a parabolic stress strain relationship for our concrete uh, to that which we got using our linear elastic assumptions. And you can see here that we have about a 9% difference. Um, if you saw in the uh, previous example, the difference was about 1.5%. Um, so our time effects uh, will increase the, the difference um, between what we find with linear elastic and what we find with uh, parabolic. We can now compare our long-term response to our short-term response, uh, which I'm showing here. Um, so up top, we have our long-term response, and down below, we have our short-term response. Um, so looking at the, the last row where we have our response under an axial load of um, 1,000 kips in compression. Uh, so I summarize everything in this table down at the bottom, and uh, we can see that our strain in the column goes up about three point or yeah three point seven seven times so the long term strain is about three point seven seven times the short term strain um, so that's a you know substantial increase uh, the stress in the concrete decreases the stress in the non pre stress steel increases and the stress in our pre stressing steel decreases. Um, so you can see that most of the stress is uh, and is transferring from our concrete um, to our uh, non-pre-stressed steel as our, our concrete creeps and um, shrinks under uh, you know due to time effects. So uh, that concludes this example problem.